Any questions? Hey. Yes. Is it true that there is a place in a man's head that if you shoot it, it will blow up? Hey guys, Drew here with another episode of Gaming Obscurity, the show where we look at old games that may have been popular or at least recognizable when they first came out, but have since fallen into obscurity and kind of to the bottom of the bargain bins in terms of where we remember them and how often they come up in discussion. Today I'm going to be reviewing Black, which is a game that a lot of you have probably heard of because this game actually sold really well. I mean, look, it's platinum hits for goodness sake. Black is a first-person shooter developed by Criterion, the developers behind the very famous Burnout Racing series, and it was published by Electronic Arts in February of 2006. When they set out to develop this game, Criterion said that they wanted to do for first-person shooters what the Burnout series did for racing games, so they wanted to bring the destruction from the Burnout series and kind of bring it over to the first-person shooter genre and try to implement a really good attention to detail as far as destruction is concerned. They also put a huge emphasis on weapon accuracy and whether or not their gun models were accurate to real life. And so their animations today are really, really impressive and look really flashy, which is why you might occasionally see this game pop up every now and then on places like Reddit where people will post GIFs of reload animations because they do all admittedly look pretty cool. These animations and their attention to detail with the weapons is why this game is quickly coined by a lot of critics as gun porn. It's not really a positive or negative thing to say about this game because it's fairly true. There are a lot of weapons in this game and they put a lot of attention to detail into how these weapons work and how they reload. The developers even kind of embraced this whole gun porn aspect by including it on the box art. I mean on the box it says, guns are the stars, every bullet is your baby, bigger guns, louder explosions, leave a trail of destruction, get creative with your kills. They include those as the five rules of guncraft on the back of the friggin' box. So, uh, yeah, they knew what they were doing and they weren't really ashamed of it. So they took the destructibility from the Burnout franchise and added it into a super hyper-realistic first-person shooter and they tried to make something that was interesting and would shake up the industry. And like I said, it sold very, very well. So they kind of did succeed in shaking up the industry as they wanted to. But did they shake it up in the right way? And why has Black kind of just fallen into obscurity? I mean, if the game sold as well as it did, why does nobody really talk about it anymore? So in this review, I'm really going to delve into why those things are and why the game hasn't aged that well. Ooh, yeah, look at that. That do anything for you? How about this? If you suddenly feel your loins tightening, you aren't alone. Since its launch, Black has been unanimously described as gun porn thanks to its highly detailed weapon models and reload animations. Every rivet and ridge on these weapons are fully captured here, and the game even goes out of its way to show the bullets correctly chambered in each weapon. Hell, the game even switches to a shallow depth of field so that whenever you reload, the only thing you can see is that sweet, sweet cluster of pixels. It's not all about the looks, though, because every single weapon feels and sounds great. The entire game, for that matter, sounds incredible. When things are going off with the music booming and the weapons fire bellowing, it makes you feel like you're the biggest badass this side of John McClane. Add on top of that that this game has a fair amount of destructibility peppered throughout its environments, and what we have is a fun, fast, run-and-gun shooter that will last you about an afternoon depending on the difficulty. And uh, yeah, that's it. There's not much else to see here. What, you want me to go deeper, analyze the game? You can't just accept that it's a fun romp and live with that? <sighs> But if you get upset because I tarnish your amazing memories of this game, don't go blaming me. Right when you start the game up, the developer makes sure you know exactly what you're getting into. This is a shooter, dammit, and we like guns. Then you start the game and are met with a black screen. <laughs> this beginning is very bizarre because it spends about 5 minutes letting you just listen to the score for the game.
I'll be honest, I'm not a huge music snob, but what they have here is pretty good. For all I know, it's pretty generic mass-produced orchestral music, but hey, at least you can tell that someone put in a lot of effort with it. Then you get introduced to the story, or whatever this game considers a story. You play as Sergeant Jack Keller, a black ops operative with a bit of an anger problem. God damn it, somebody take out that RPG! Keller is trying to stop a rogue agent turned arms dealer named Lennox, but gosh darn it, he can't help but just destroy everything along the way. Seriously, the game openly encourages you to destroy as many things as possible. The game's goal is essentially to let you be the loose cannon cop who doesn't know what collateral damage is. Detective Ryan McCain is a loose cannon cop who doesn't play by the rules in... Loose cannon cop who doesn't play by the rules. This is an awesome concept on paper and has potentially really good satire for the modern shooter genre. But unfortunately, they kind of squandered that potential altogether. Apart from maybe the last couple of levels, there is hardly any connection between the cutscenes in the game and the levels you actually play. That would be fine if you were actually playing the cool parts of the story, but no, you're just playing the in-between uninteresting parts. All of the cool moments, like Keller's interactions with Lennox, happen off-screen and are simply described in a cutscene. This happens countless times where you finish a level and then hear that something really cool happened just before the game faded to black. <laughs> this means that the story is incredibly difficult to follow and is borderline incomprehensible. Let me try to lay out the story for you. Keller is getting interrogated by the CIA because he blew up a bunch of shit hunting a terrorist group called the Seventh Wave. It turns out that one of the members of the Seventh Wave is an ex-Black Ops soldier named Lennox who used to work with Keller. Keller and his team then set out to find Lennox. Some more convolution happens and Keller's friends and colleagues are killed and then he learns that Lennox is being held in a Russian gulag. Keller then finds Lennox, disobeys orders, tortures Lennox for killing his friends, and then kills Lennox. All of this is being told to us from an interrogation room, and almost all of these points I mentioned are off-screen moments that you only hear about rather than playing for yourself. This gets frustrating after a while when you start to realize that you aren't really playing along with the plot at all. You kind of just play missions around the plot and the story just kind of happens. Nothing is connected and nothing makes sense. To add insult to injury, this game has one of the most abrupt endings and hardest sequel baits I've ever seen. After Killer admits to killing Lennox and stating that if he could, he would do it again, the interrogating officer informs Killer that Lennox somehow escaped and is in fact alive. A while back you said you wanted to kill Lennox so bad you could taste it. Can you still taste it, Sergeant Keller? Yes. Then let us begin. The game drops this as if it's some massive twist, but considering we've never actually seen Lennox, we as a player don't really give a shit whatsoever. The story in this game, for all intents and purposes, is just bad. There is kind of a huge explanation for why the story is so bad, though. The developers at Criterion focused first and foremost on creating a bombastic action movie experience. They developed the gameplay and the levels independently of the story to try and create a game that was fun to play before anything else. They didn't care about telling the story, they just wanted to create a fun, turn your brain off kind of experience like an action movie. In doing this though, they forgot that most great action movies are so good because they have a lot of heart and soul built into them by their creators. We're police officers. We're not trained to handle this kind of violence. The people who make action movies know what they are doing. They still try to construct a world in the film where all the crazy shit that happens would actually be possible. If Black had gone full cheese, shown us more of Lennox and actually developed him as a believable villain, then maybe this game could have passed as a guilty pleasure. But instead what we have here is a game that takes itself way too seriously to the point where you constantly ask yourself, wait, is this satire or is this really supposed to be this boring? It doesn't help that today we already have a great Black Ops story in the form of Treyarch's Call of Duty games, at least the first one. Those games actually show the espionage side of Black Operations, not just the run and gun side. If you want a game that more closely captures what it's like to be part of Black Ops, you're better off looking elsewhere. But I'll be honest, this game was never marketed as having an amazing story and the developers never promised that. What they did promise was a fun game with incredible gameplay and a lot of destruction, so did they deliver on that at least? Well, not completely. You start to notice the cracks in the game's skin right at the beginning. There is no look sensitivity slider in this game, which means that you will have to aim at the sluggish pace the developers decided for you. This might not be the biggest thing for some people, but in a fast-paced shooter like this, being able to turn on a dime can determine life or death. 
and can cause a lot of frustration if you can't do it right. Your character just feels so slow, made worse by the fact that you actually move slower when you strafe left and right. This makes combat immediately feel sluggish, almost like you're driving a tank around rather than controlling a human being. As far as the actual combat is concerned, like I said before, it looks and sounds satisfying enough. However, none of the weapons in the game aside from the explosives and the shotguns have hardly any stopping power. When you can't get that lucky headshot, enemies take forever to go down with standard weapons. Each automatic weapon in this game feels like a pea shooter that barely does any damage. It's not that enemies are bullet sponges either, because they can be taken down easily by a single sniper bullet, a couple shotgun shells, or a single magnum shot. It's just the automatic weapons in the game that have a hard time killing anything, and as a result you quickly learn that they're essentially useless. Oh, and there are hidden areas in the game that give you cool weapons and collectibles, but almost all of these areas can only be accessed by blowing the door open with a shotgun. Yes, only a shotgun. Not a grenade, not an RPG, not a heavy machine gun, only a shotgun. This means that you quickly learn that shotguns are basically this game's versions of keys, and that you need to have one on you at all times. In the end, you really only have one available slot open for other weapons. There are a ton of cool weapons in the game, but thanks to the game's restrictive design, you never get to experience any of them for too long. And if you think I'm exaggerating saying it's restrictive since you only need shotguns for collectibles, then get ready because that's only a small part of a much, much larger issue. Each level has a primary objective and anywhere from 8 to 16 secondary objectives. These secondary objectives are sometimes things you can complete naturally, like clearing a location or progressing through the level. Other times, they're finding collectibles throughout the map. What then becomes a problem is that the game requires you to complete a certain amount of these secondary objectives to progress through the game. On normal difficulty, I was usually required to complete three secondary objectives to progress. This was easy enough and never really caused me a problem. However, on higher difficulties, you're expected to complete more secondary objectives, and the highest difficulty requires you to complete all of them to progress. This means that the game forces you to hunt for collectibles and complete optional objectives. Wait, do you hear that? That's the artificial difficulty alarm! Oh boy! But seriously, this is only done so they could extend the length of the game a bit and add some, uh, replayability to the game? I'm sorry, but forcing people to complete optional objectives isn't my idea of replayability. This method does work as intended though, I could see these difficulties easily adding an extra 2 or 3 hours to the game's runtime. But how much of that time would you actually enjoy? That's my biggest gripe about this game, and it's one that I've actually run into a lot while doing this show. After a while, every encounter starts to feel the same. You fight the same enemies in very similar environments with the same weapons and the same objective, go here and blow shit up. Even the massive explosions get dull after a while. It's not all completely forgettable, there are a couple levels that actually stand out and are pretty fun. This clip is from the bridge level, which is actually the level I remembered the most from when I was a kid, and for good reason. This level is really well designed, and it's placed towards the end of the game so you need to use your entire arsenal to get through it. It's a blast all the way through, and I would say that the game is almost worth playing just for this level alone. But the game also has a few minor annoyances that start to grade on you over time. The reload animations are cool at first, but over time they become way too long and they can't be shortened so they just end up annoying you. Remember how I said that every time you reload the game shifts to a shallow depth of field? Yeah, at first that looks cool, but you quickly come to realize that it gets in the way more than anything. I can't tell you how many times I almost died because I couldn't see what was happening or because I was stuck in an animation. This is where the game's gun porn emphasis starts to drag it down a bit. The developers spent so much time making sure the weapons looked and sounded great that everything else fell to the wayside. Even the game's touted destructibility isn't anything to write home about. Maybe in 2006 being able to destroy a few boxes and a wall every now and then was impressive, but it certainly isn't now. I don't think these problems are the reasons that Black fell into obscurity though. 2006 was a big year for next-gen hardware and people were making the switch in droves. I remember buying Black on launch, but not long after I shifted my attention to that new, shiny Xbox 360 that symbolized the future. I feel like Black was overshadowed by this impending hardware, and things weren't helped by the fact that Criterion had no plans to port the game over. The final nail in the coffin was the fact that the game wasn't released for PC, meaning the game was doomed to be left and forgotten on the already dated consoles. Maybe if Black saw a PC release or even a re-release on Xbox 360 and PS3, things would be different now. Black could have been 
a huge franchise, but since the developers decided to gimp the game's launch, it was doomed from the word go. We could pinpoint Black as being a huge inspiration for games like Battlefield Bad Company with its destructibility, or even Call of Duty Black Ops with its story. And Black actually sold pretty well, so an argument could be made that it in fact did shake up the shooter genre. But if all Black did was show developers and publishers that a half-assed story and complete player detachment was okay for a game to be successful, then I would say that Black was more of a failure in the eyes of history and a catalyst for the problems that shooters are plagued with today. If I were to describe my experience with Black in one word, it would be... disappointed. There are very few things that Black does right, and for what it's worth, those things are very fun. But for the most part, I'm just left wondering what could have been. There was a lot of potential here, and it seems like a lot of that was just kind of squandered. You could describe Black as the antithesis of a game like Half-Life 2. Both sought to shake up the shooter genre, but went about it in completely different ways. Both were successful in their own right, but I think there's a reason that one is still held in high regard today, and the other has spent most of its life in the bottom of bargain bins. Apparently at some point a sequel was planned for Black, but it was eventually scrapped by EA, probably due to lack of interest. Still, Stuart Black, heh, who was Black's co-creator, helped create its spiritual successor called Body Count in 2011. This game mostly flew under my radar, and I never got my hands on it myself, but I've heard that it is once again a mostly fun but forgettable romp. Since Body Count didn't sell nearly as well as Black, it is probably safe to say that the franchise is dead and gone. Like I said, I enjoyed my experience with Black for the most part, and I can recommend it to you if you can find a copy. All I would say is to only play the game until you start to get bored. Once that happens, you'll have seen everything the game has to offer already, and if you just drop it right there, you won't really be missing much. Who knows, maybe you'll find something you really like, but for me I'm just reminded once again that nostalgic memories are that, memories. Whenever we try to relive those moments that we hold so dear, it never ends up meeting our expectations, tarnishing the memories in the process. So if you remember Black and remember loving it, maybe you should just leave it at that. I know I wish I did. The game is just much better as a memory. Alright, that is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Um, have you guys gone back and played Black? How was your experience? I found it just completely generic and boring and then it just ended before I could really get into it. Let me know in the comments if you played it yourself or if you remember playing it. Um, like I said, if you remember playing it, you might just be better off just kind of keeping that memory and not really trying to play it yourself. Um, it, it exists better as a memory, in my opinion, because I remember thinking this game was awesome when I was a kid, and now that I've played it now with all of the different modern first-person shooters there are today, it kind of just gets lost in all of the crap. Add on top of that that there's other games like Battlefield Bad Company that have way more destruction this than this game, and it's an actual mechanic in that game rather than just kind of a gimmick in this one. It's, there's not really much to see here. It's not that unique anymore. So anyway, there's interesting things coming up. Um, this show is actually ending. I'm going to be changing the name. Expect the next review in a few weeks. Uh, I might actually take a week off to kind of prepare for things. I want to go about the show in a really in a different fashion. The format will probably be almost exactly the same. But as far as like the quality of video and planning a little bit ahead of time, uh, that should go a little bit better. As it is right now, I'm kind of making these videos in one week each, so it's kind of stressful. I want to kind of change that so that I have them kind of staggered. I don't think you guys care about that at all. But uh, yeah, if you're new to the channel, we're definitely going to keep doing more reviews like this and gameplays with these games actually related to these games, um, not just like random gameplays that we just randomly play. Uh, so if you enjoyed what you saw today, you maybe try subscribing. Um, we're still growing, and like I said in other episodes, the more you guys like or give us feedback, the better the show will get, or future iterations of the show. So uh, thank you guys for watching, and um, yeah, I'll see you later. Bye!